Hello everybody and welcome to Lush and Salty Aquariums. My name is Stefan and I appreciate your patronage. Okay, so this is the uh, 22 and a half gallon. It's more than 20 uh, Gs. It's the ADA, it's their high version of a 20. So it's got a couple more gallons and it's, uh, well, it's higher. Um, and I just did a little bit of a cleaning here. You can see, uh, if you see what I see, it looks pretty sweet, right? And at center is what I'm calling Charlie's Angels. Now I'm not Charlie, but these are three angel fish and I couldn't help but make the pun, right? Three completely different kinds of angel fish that I've uh, procured at the uh, Greenwater Swap meet and I bought them from different vendors. Uh, dirt cheap for such high quality I gotta tell you like um, five dollars a pair for ten I mean really spectacular deal on gorgeous angel fish and the rest of this tank uh, for the longest time since it's set up only had the uh, lamb chop rasboras and ember tetras as well as a robust cleanup crew and then there was one there is one honey garami and there she is making her appearance or him probably a him because of the color and usually for that species they sell males uh, predominantly because they're more colorful but that gorgeous fish was a bit reclusive uh, and i wanted a uh, small juvenile angel fish that i could grow up in here and if they got too big i can put them in my display tank uh, no problem where there's a colony of uh, adult angel fish doing their thing but I wanted three delicate angel fish with high fins ideally super veals now that means they have the uh, double the gene for veal so both parents were veals uh, or they uh, created offspring from one parent that was and wasn't but had the double gene I'm not a, bi a biologist but it, it's uh, the ultimate in the veal tail is super veal. And that's what this speckled or sort of lace clown in the center. You can see it has the clown pattern on the side. I'm not getting much side, but incredibly long fins, which uh, in my display tank with the Siamese algae eaters and other activity, they might've been picked on. My experience with that tank tells me that they would have because I lost a few veals in there for that very reason. Even the Amano shrimp would ride uh, on top of those lengthy fins. They, I guess they replicate some sort of worm, you know, or wonder, it's too tantalizing to resist. And so fish and even invertebrates would latch on. At least that's, that's what happened a couple months ago in that tank. So I committed to just having straight fin angel fish, large ones, big ones that could handle themselves and move quickly. Veal tail angels like this koi and that um, clown up there cannot move as fast. They tend to have smaller bodies and longer finage. And then this is a straight fin, but uh, smaller than the other two, a gorgeous uh, platinum angel. It looks like it has the glitter gene as well, which means you get that uh, shiny finish on it. And so since I wasn't committing to any specific type of angel fish for this tank i was hoping for three veals i've got two but one super veal one regular veal and one that isn't so if you do the math and break it down it's like having three veal tails and that was a ridiculous waste of 10 seconds i beg your pardon so these three i'm gonna try and do something here that koi is sensitive uh to food and and disturbances much shyer i'm worried about him or her the one thing though that i can get him or her to eat is live baby brine shrimp which i hatch pretty much on a regular basis and to make sure that this angel fish gets his or her quota of nutrients i use a pipette that has some of the that's baby brine. It's still in the saline, the salt water, but I didn't want to be babbling and talking while it was in a net uh, without it. So a little salt water never hurt anybody, but watch. These angelfish have been um, trained unintentionally 
to come up and see watch him he will there he goes he's eating like a baby from a bottle and the other fish don't have any problem uh, hunting down baby brine shrimp really no fish does but that one for some reason i can't get it to eat pretty much anything other than this so i'm very worried uh, i have been obviously feeding other things and i mean i've seen him uh come up and he'll take blood worms and chew on them and then spit them out i mean some of you are familiar there he goes look at that boom 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 <laughs> Good baby, good baby. <laughs> but I really want that beautiful koi to uh, grow up. And I, like a lot of fish, once it gets, and the other, look at these guys, they're going bonkers. Hey, what about us? What about us? Well, I mean, I know about us. You guys are going to be fine. So it's really here. And now you can see I'm lowering it down. Those are live baby brine shrimp. And the angelfish just love to take big gulps of it. Now, each individual baby brine shrimp is frankly nil when it comes to providing adequate food. And while these fish will hunt them down individually, I think they get, look at that guy. He's the, the marble or the clown. Look at him, boom, boom, boom. I think that's adorable uh, fish behavior. It's probably not in my best interest to continue doing this. Uh, the fish need to be a little bit more uh, independent, if you will, but what the hell, I don't want to lose one, and I've lost enough to know that it is possible when a fish isn't eating, uh, except for one thing or under one condition, my only choice really is to replicate that one thing, that one condition. But I wanted to show off this tank and sort of the nutty way I'm providing nutrients for Charlie's Angels and uh, also basically look at a planted tank right after um, a cleaning. I did the filters uh, and I changed the water and I did a trim. Now what an excellent looking fish tank. Is it just me? Maybe it is. I don't mean to sound arrogant but I'm super super delighted about how this fish tank has turned out while while there's never an end game at least not here i don't break them down and restart i try to sustain the tank and as it evolves and make changes and maybe lose some plants and switch them out i had had some uh ludwigia repens in the center there and i they were just not happening the bottoms would all die and the tops would be awesome but it was kind of like a pogo stick so I put in some of my veil and that experiment is kind of working, but I'm getting uh, the dreaded Blackbeard algae or BBA. And I really don't want to introduce the Siamese algae eater to this tank because of the very reason I described earlier, they might uh, get aggressive towards these angelfish. But I could always pull those veils and put in, you know, more of this indica I could extend this group of stems or I could put a sword plant back there or a large java fern. It it could easily change and if I continue to have this algae, I'm going to get rid of it, right? And those plants were from my other tank anyway, so no harm, no foul. From a distance, it looks good. It's the effect I want. And angelfish do like veils. They, they do hang out uh, within those strands when I'm not feeding and filming and just in front of the tank. And it is a good plant for angelfish. And I do like the air it creates in this aquascape, but I can't tolerate that algae. Now I've been able to rid that algae in other tanks without using Siamese algae eaters. Uh, Fluval XL can help, a lot of water changes. The more I can create an environment where the plants are absorbing max nutrients, the less opportunistic the algae will be. And uh, I'm still trying to dial that in. The rest of the tank is doing incredible. And if I pretend that that fuzzy algae isn't there, well, you know, everything else is B plus, A minus, A, right? And, you know, that's my grade for my work and for this tank. It's about at the seven, eight month mark and this is still the same hardscape and aquascape I haven't made any fundamental changes i've just as i said moved plants around uh, pulled some added some 
I've had to uh, definitely uh, trim out this Christmas moss. Uh, it has, it's creating a wonderful carpet down there, but it, it can be the first plant to overpower and turn into just big, huge puff balls. And I don't like that effect. So I pulled a lot of that out and I'm hoping this Anubius Petite uh, starts to colonize within those nooks and crannies and create a, a ribbon effect from that plant. It's one of my favorite plants and it's still kind of the same plant I put in there. It hasn't spread or created new growth, but that, that, that plant takes time and you have to have patience. All right, well, speaking of patience, I think I might have exhausted yours. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you think. Comments are so appreciated. As always, as I did today, keep your hands in the tank. Ciao for now.